this introducing the original blood clad podcast not PS. Sword in semantic. Special dedication all the way from New York. Boom! Yeah man, SWOT semantic. Yeah man. Boom! Sword in semantic. Yeah man. Big ups to the man. Sword in semantic. On another episode of Soothing Semantics, I am your host, Rafi Pinsky. Yee! Today we have Elise on the show. How's it Yo, going, bro? What's going, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing great. Doing fantastic. How about you? I'm doing great, my brother. Just awesome. enjoying this moment right now. I know. It's not a bad moment, man. <laughs> Dude, 2020 is about to end. Isn't that crazy? Yes, it is, man. It's been a weird year. I'm glad it's about to end. What did you think when you were drunk on New Year's? How did you think the year was going to go? To be honest with you... <laughs> Uh, New Year's Eve is my birthday, so this New Year's Eve I was working, and I had a pl- party planned like a couple of days after, but I had I didn't know New Year's Eve was gonna be like this because I had my own plans of what I wanted to do for this year, and then this year happened, so I had to adjust. So it's been a fun year because you know that's life, you know you're gonna plan something, and then something is gonna totally take you off your path. The key is how you adjust to get back on the path that you set for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, it's kind of like man plans, God laughs, if, you, if you're familiar <laughs> with that term. <laughs> I haven't, but I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's my first time hearing it. That's, That's hilarious. The truth. It's the biggest truth because we always have these like good ideas that we have, we set for ourselves and mm-hmm. then and then you know God or whatever you believe is kind of like, oh, really? Oh, really? I'm going to make things interesting. <laughs> You know what I mean? Let me see how you handle this. <laughs> Dude, you were telling me earlier when we were, we were hanging out mm-hmm. about the uh, the record the record label that you have. Yes. Like so, you. so yes. Literally, I started my own record label. You know, I'm a I'm a music fiend, mm-hmm. not a music junkie, a music fiend. I eat, sleep music all day. It's 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 what helps me through the day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as I'm growing up, I hear, you know, I listen to any genre, hip hop, R&B, jazz, pop, rock. It doesn't matter what it is. And growing up listening, I felt there wasn't enough people expressing themselves. I noticed there were in a lot of people expressing themselves. They were expressing with people wanted to hear or with others thought people wanted to hear. Mm. So, you know, me personally, how I think, you know, when there's a problem, instead of complaining about the problem, you know, be the answer, you know, try to solve it or be the answer. So how do you feel like how do you feel like you're the answer if you get to if you get if you're in that situation, how do you feel like? So how I feel like I'm the answer is instead of complaining about the negativity or about what you're not hearing in the music, you be that. Mm-hmm. So I when I created my level, when I when, when I created my label, I told myself, E you're going to be the difference you're going to be the positive energy you're going to be you know you're going to be everything that you're not hearing now so the generation after you knows it's okay to talk or say these things they don't have to feel like they're an outlier okay so what give me an example of something give me an example of music that you feel is not where you're at like music that isn't uh, that doesn't speak to you and what kind of music are you producing that, that offers what you're saying it offers? So, for example, I feel now in the music industry, the hottest things out is like drill rap. And what drill rap is, you know, it's a, it's a dope beat. It's a very, very dope beat. And then the artist that's coming on there and talking about things that normal people are not living. Either about talking about how much money they have or about talking about, you know, that they're effing your girlfriends or how much women they have or how much balding, you know, how how better they are than you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what drill rap is about. But when you listen to me, when you listen to Ultraville, you know, we talk about everyday things of life. We talk about the struggle. You know, we talk about the mentality that it takes to, you know, you know, switch up that mindset so you can be successful. We're putting that positive t- energy in your life instead of talking about things that's going to bring you down and make you feel like you're less than. We're so, doing opposite. So what are things in your music that you talk about? So, for example, just the other day, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I dropped a song called Rare Breed. Mm-hmm. And it talks about how I am different from everyone in the industry. And... The main things that I talk about in this song is how I'm different is 
I don't talk about me, you know, being with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about I'm I'm talking about with a real woman. I'm talking about I'm talking about being with a woman who understands me, who's willing to put in the time to be with me instead of being out on the streets or being somewhere that I'm not. You know, I talk about how my mentality is different, you know, you know, in the music industry or anywhere when they teach you when someone's hating on you, they teach you, you know, to fight back to, you know, to always have an answer, you know, and that's fine. But to be honest with you, in my opinion, I feel a real man, you know, he hears what people are saying and then he adjusts. He adds it to his life to make him a better person. Instead of fighting back, you hear what they're saying about you. And if it's true, then you add it to your craft. You make it you you make it help you be a better person instead of just blending in or fighting back. It's very mature. Because a lot of the time, the negative noise is there to try to throw you off. Mm -hmm. There's a thing that I've been hearing a lot lately is people who hate you generally or, almost, or pretty much always are not doing as well as you. Because what does that mean? Is that we're we talking about money? Are we talking about uh, you know relationship health, mental health? What does doing better than you mean? Generally, people who are quote-unquote haters are people who I think simply have jealousy. And they're trying to see if their words on a computer will actually get to you. Mm -hmm. So if you have this secure kind of mindset, you won't care much. And it's, it's this is coming from somebody who, you know, I'm human. I you can be insulted, human. right? I mean, you, mm -hmm. there are things that people say that hurt. Mm -hmm. But if you can get to a point in your life where you can look, you can take a step back and say, I'm putting myself out there. I There are probably going to be people who don't agree, who are going to say things that, that don't feel good but essentially do they really make a difference to me if they're close to you and you know they're they love you and they say something hurtful that hurt that that really you know that that sticks it does you know i won't say it hurts me but it does stick because then i have to listen mm -hmm. because this is an individual that's around me every day right you know even if i don't think i have a flaw they're watching me so they're they're taking note of things that might be a flaw right you know that might put me in a down situation later in the future. So if someone's close to you and they they tell you something, you know, even if you don't notice it, listen. It's a great advice. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful advice. A lot of people don't do that because they're like, oh, you think you know me so well. You're, you know, people who have parents that they don't get along with. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, well, you don't know anything about me. You might have raised me and this and that. And it's not to say that they they always understand their kids because sometimes kids who are afraid of their parents who don't, or don't click with their parents will go to someone else mm -hmm. to kind of confide in. But your parents still knows you better no. than most people. They know you, you 100%. Know, they do. At the end of the day, they might not know you once you become a teenager and you're doing things on the side. Mm -hmm. when, they <laughs> might not know some of the things that you're getting into. But, but they, they, they know your they know your essence. They understand you more than you think. So I love what you were talking about, about the music, because... I mean, we had this conversation before the episode, mm -hmm. and I think nowadays in hip hop, I mean, this has been a thing for a very long very time. Very long time. When you, when there are hip hop artists that are coming out with music that isn't just talking about the cliche, sex, drugs, uh, you know, gangs, this gangs. and that. When you're talking about something that brings value. potential success and value mm -hmm. and positivity, the thing that sucks about that is that that doesn't sell as much. But I think if it becomes more mainstream, if we promote it more and we make it something that's, you add style to it, you add mm -hmm. your own spice to it and you make it, you know what I mean? It's only not cool because not enough people are doing it, right? And the thing is you personally, like you, Elise, if you, I think if you make it something that you give a fuck about mm -hmm. and, you, and you constantly do it and you show how much you care, like that's... Like that's gonna be that's gonna be awesome. No, it I mean, is. I agree one hundred percent. Right, I, 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 I'm I'm pro, man. I support <laughs> you fully. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I, I agree one hundred percent. Like I can give you an example, like um, uh, like like me, like um, one thing that I do because, like I said, I'm a music fiend. I listen. I study the music industry. I study what everyone think is hot. You know, I study what people think is cool. But at the same time, I want to be true to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to put out something that I know, you know, that I'm not contradicting myself. So just like how you said, you know, you still want to be relevant, how you want to be cool. One thing I started to do is, you know, I created, you know, like I said, my own label. I created my own clothing brand. 
because I understand, you know, if you want to make impact, if you want to change how the way people view you, you know, you have to start with the younger generation because, you know, the younger generation is going to be the ones that is going to carry your legacy. It's not the ones that's hearing you now and the old heads is the younger generation. So if you can pack, if you can impact the younger generation, you can make an influence on them. They're going to be the ones that's going to carry, you know, the things that you want to do. That's why I told myself, you know, instead of being the problem or instead of complaining about the problem, yo, let's be the answer. You know, let's be the first one to come out and be like, yo, hey, you know, I understand this is what's hot and I understand this is what's been the regular, you know, talking about the drugs, the women and everything. But, yo, like real talk, this is not everyday life, not the everyday person that's living this, mm-hmm. you know, so let's be the difference. Let's let's do this and be dope at it. So other people, you know, who's maybe more talented or better than me are not afraid to touch and be and do those subjects so you can have an ear. You pioneer, know? bro. You, you you can be the pioneer of this. One. There are other rappers doing it, but if you can there are people that that meaning you're not you wouldn't be the first person to put out quality rap that isn't about the classic shit that we hear every day. Mm-hmm. But if you can make it something different, make it sim- you add Elise's version of hip hop to it. And you give this beautiful idea of peace and love instead of instead of killing people. One hundred percent. You add the idea of striving for success. It doesn't have to be college necessarily, but going after the kind of business you want. And what? it can be hip hop. It can be dance. It, it can, can be, be any of your dreams. Right. But something that involves love and giving and care as opposed mm-hmm. to the stuff that's talked about now. Not not necessarily striving to get the nicest whip or to get... All the things that's hot now that they're talking about in music is about pleasing yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not about helping your team grow. It's mm-hmm. not about helping others grow. Because mm-hmm. in real life, if you're going to grow, you first have to help others. Because those others are going to be the ones that's going to put you in positions that help you grow. Mm-hmm. If you're helping no one, you're not going to grow. If you're only thinking about yourself, you're not going to grow. Mm-hmm. You have to first help others. And I feel that's what the music industry is putting out now. Just a bunch of people that's telling you how balling they are. But they're not telling you how did they get to that spot. Someone had to help them get to that position. Mm-hmm. you know. But they're not telling you how they got to that position. And that's what we need. We need more people telling us you know, how to be owners of our own things instead of being employee. You know, that's a big difference. You know, Mm -hmm. we need more people telling us, you know, how to be bosses, how to be managers of our own, you know, of our own imaginations, of our own creations, instead of being someone going to someone to help you put those ideas together. Because if you go to someone else, they're going to want to cut. You know, that's just natural, but you have to understand that. But if you don't want that middleman, then you need to understand to know, all right. What do I have to do? Who do I have to collab with? Who do I need to put in my circle to put me in a situation to help my dreams come true or help my vision come true or whatever you're following? You need others. The moment you start thinking about yourself, you're not going to go anywhere. 100%. And I think it's uh, it's so much deeper than, than you make it because... Anytime, I mean, like, obviously, we all as humans have our selfishness, you mm-hmm. know, like, and, and it's only natural. You're right. So you you look out for yourself because you, you know that if you're not looking out for yourself, you can't expect someone else to. 100%. But when the, it, this is just, as I get older, I realize this more and more. It's that the more you try to help the people around you, and I mean, even people that aren't necessarily mm-hmm. in your immediate in circle, your circle, you end up gaining so much more. Mm-hmm. so much more even if it's from a selfish standpoint even if you're helping to expect something back which i think is wrong which is totally missing the point mm-hmm. but even if that's your attitude you'll get more from doing that than if you don't do it at all so i that's i'm not recommending that whatsoever i'm against it but it's it's just as simple as when you give you get 100%. and you shouldn't be looking at the get but when it's as simple as that when you give you get if you have full intention to give you always you always get it in return and you won't always necessarily get it from that person you gave to but the world will reward you. you the 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 law of attraction the, the law of fact. nature will just reward you for your well-doing and then the opposite is true if you do you know bad among people you might have all the money in the world you can be you know uh, you can be el chapo and have <laughs> billions of dollars hundreds of millions but eventually you, you the, the cops come after you and it's over 100 you you, you're not gonna you're not gonna live 
a peaceful long life for the rest of your days when you have when you seek lo- short term uh short term validation short term goals you know quick money you know fast money that's not going to that's not going to give you long term permanent fulfillment mm. and i th- i think i mean i think you'll have people that might disagree some people who've gotten it I, I, still- I know there are people that disagree Mm-hmm. you know that's what this is that's what this is all about this though. is all this is about you know just bringing light to it mm-hmm. you know it's funny you know you said something that you know uh like one of one of the big movies that's out now is like the godfather scarface mm-hmm. you know i you know i've seen the originals but just the first original movies i haven't seen the sequels but i want y'all to think about the 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 character that's in those movies you know think about scarface how tony was on uh, um he was uh like he was just getting into it he was young he had to work himself up and then when he got himself up to the top you know how his values changed he was only thinking about himself mm-hmm. and then how everybody wanted to kill him you know compared to someone who's thinking about the people who's thinking about everyone else um, vials who's not just thinking about himself it's just how people see you and the reason i brought that up is because you know i want you to think about the circle the people you keep around you tony he was around drug dealers he was around killers he was around people who lived that lifestyle so that's all they think about mm-hmm. imagine if he surrounded himself around healthy business or like business healthy people that told him like yo i understand you in a drug game you making that money but use that money to invest in this Mm-hmm. Use your money to invest into these neighborhoods because if you invest into these neighborhoods, you can help other people like you who might be poor be able to make money. You know, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be wealthy. That's what the world is not promoting enough of. You know, they want Absolutely. you. <laughs> you get Absolutely. what I'm saying? They they're not but, See, this is the thing though. I wanted to make this clear that this is not just about hip hop or black culture. But, this is an issue that we as humans have as a you, problem with 100 percent. So, so scarface the godfather that's God. italian that's Sp- cuban or spanish we have it all from all walks of life all walks of life. so 100%. we're not going to go and we're not going to go and 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 talk about once and i only said those because those are named movies those yeah, are movies that but, everyone knows but you see how we promote that right mm-hmm. people in their in their bedrooms they have scarface and they have this and that because we're attracted to that villain mm-hmm. like, i think that's what's so messed up about human psychology is that we're not as intrigued by the person who grows up and lives this like uh who has to work for it they want you to think like it's all given to you no but i think what i meant to say was i think people are attracted to that badass Mm. you get what i'm saying scarface is a badass he doesn't he's a follow badass. rules i see what you're saying and the hip-hop artists nowadays they don't follow the rules they don't <laughs> so it, i think that's what people in the, the like on one side of of a civilized society, we we like you know being a, an upstanding citizen, following you know following the law, paying taxes, even though no one wants to do it. <laughs> but I'm saying like yeah. we respect that, like oh he's a good citizen, he's a good American, he has a good job, or he owns a business, or blah blah blah. But that's not what we're putting in the movies a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. We're putting in Wolf of Wall Street. He's a mm-hmm. savage guy. He's who's whatever. He's so, gonna do whatever it takes but, to get by what he wants. Because but that's because. That goes against everything about normal people, right? Mm -hmm. Those people are not normal. They go against it. They go, I don't care about the law. I'm going to shoot people. I'm going to kill people. I'm a gangster. I'm a this. I'm a that. So we know it's not good for society, but we're attracted to it Mm -hmm. because it it's it's an independent mindset. It's Mm -hmm. I know that you don't like it. I know that all of you don't. I know the government doesn't like it. I know the cops don't like it. But I'm going to do it because I want to do it. So most people see that. And it's appealing. You see a guy, you know, you see a mafia guy, mafioso. Most people know that that person is not a good person, right? They're not doing good things mm-hmm. generally. You know, sometimes they do. But most of the time wanna, they're not. Most of the time they're <laughs> Their intentions are they want to make their money and they yep. want power and they want what they want. And they want, they don't want anyone to tell them otherwise. Mm-hmm. But we, as a culture, we, we put that on a pedestal because it's sexy. Do you get that? Yeah. But the 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 sooner we can start to find attraction to our individual the good, goals. right the the just being a good person a good per- yep, and it, and it, the 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 more it'll become an attractive thing so take mm-hmm. for instance i was watching this very interesting documentary the other day of um 
this family from, I'm pretty sure they were from DR, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. and there was this guy, uh, Koss. He's, uh, he's from New York. His family's from the DR, but he grew up in New York, and he got into drug dealing, became a massive dealer. Like, he's making bank. 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 You're from a young age. He got arrested a bunch of times. I'm making this short. He got arrested a bunch of times. Eventually, he went to jail for seven years. Mm -hmm. He was in solitary for, I think, six months, if I'm remembering correctly. I forget. I would love to have him on this on my podcast, by the way. I hope I get to meet him. But after prison, and he kept going back. He got a, he got a, um, he got into a good college. I forget which college it was, but he messed it up because he was selling, he was selling bud and I think coke on campus. And eventually, they kicked him out. Thank and you. so he went back to it. He kept going back to it. After seven years in the in, in prison, he also got really overweight. He had a girlfriend while he was doing while he was selling the drugs. He got like he was weighing like three hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. When he got into prison, they told him you have to lose weight or you're gonna die. Like your 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 cholesterol is too high or whatever it was. And in prison, he lost all the weight. After prison, he came up with an idea to open up a gym with prison style workouts. It's called Con Body. Mm -hmm. This is real. You can check it out. And you can tell by his personality he's a leader. He has a leadership personality. Mm -hmm. He's not a follower. And it simply went from from being somebody who used his leadership to become a, a drug kingpin to using that leadership to do good. And the crazy mm -hmm. part about it is only because he had that drug past and that crime past was he be was he able to find that sweet spot of good because he took that whole prison and drug life and turned it into a good thing. 100%. And, th and that's also so attractive to, to your average person because mm -hmm. even if they wanted to do that kind of crime, they don't have the balls because to do, to do these things, you have to have some level have of balls. To. I agree. Right. You can't, well, you know what I mean? It takes balls because you might get caught, you might get killed, yada, yada. So he obviously has a set of balls, but it's so attractive and I know this for a fact. I know how, you know, especially the the female brain, this kind of guy is is a confident person in his mm -hmm. own way because he's, you know, he, he was able to do all those wild, he has a wild life. You know, a lot he's of not people, afraid to do what makes him feel comfortable. He goes out, he went after what he wanted, whether it was good or bad, good he or went bad. after what he, he wanted. After when he went. And that is what people want to see. That's what makes an interesting story. If he made a movie, if they made a movie about him, people would go watch it. Watch. If you make a movie about a guy who grew up in a, you know, an affluent home, he grew up in a wealthy home, went to a good college, got a job, got married, had kids. <laughs> boring, right? It's boring. <laughs> it's there's boring. no struggle. There's yeah. no hardship. There's no there's, no, there's no, there's no, you get what I'm saying? There's no passion. There's no good and bad, uh, you know, back and forth. There was no character development. Exactly. So this is why I think hip hop and mafia and all this stuff, uh, specifically the bad kind of hip hop, it has so much, uh, there's so much attraction to it because it's the idea of, you know, growing up in a hard environment, making it to the top. Mm -hmm. But I think if we can change the avenue, if we can, we, we can talk about somebody's struggles. Mm -hmm. We can talk about it where they grew up in a poor environment. There were drugs around. They dealt drugs. They did this. They did that. But we can say, I was there and now I'm here versus I was a poorer version of that and now I'm a richer version of that. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? I get what you're saying. So I, I guess my, my best way of saying it is because I totally 100% get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I guess the best way to put it in... Um, words that everybody was saying instead of you know talking about you know where we at let's talk about more like how we got there i love that you know let's talk about more how we got there you know because everyone knows where you're at we see you on tv we see you with the women we see mm -hmm. you with the money we see you having your best life even if that's not what you're living we seeing that's what you're portraying mm -hmm. but we don't you know we want to live that but the question is how did we get there? You know, let's talk about more how we get there. Because right now you're just giving us, you know, uh, fantasies. You're just giving us um, fiction mm -hmm. or nonfiction, I, I would say. You're giving us nonfiction. Let's talk about how we get there so I can live like you. Because if if I'm not living like you, then I'm going to hate. I'm, I'm going to be like, yo, I tried and it wasn't for me. But, you know, everyone is different. <laughs> You know, but a logical person, once they know how you got there, they would think about how they can add that to their life to help them get in a better position if that's what they want. Because, you know, to be real, 
you know, not everyone wants to live the life of a rapper or or a hip hop. Some some people just want to blend in. Mm-hmm. Some people just want to live in the background and just have a normal life. Having your name out there has its pros. Yep. You're, you know, because you're connected to more people and you have more opportunity. One hundred percent. But it can also be a, a con because a con, your name yeah. is out there. Your name is out there. Anything you do, right. you're going to be in the nose. TMZ right. is going to be. You know, if you know you're not a person <laughs> that doesn't want TMZ on your ass twenty four seven, then this lifestyle is not for you. <laughs> right. The lifestyle. I, mean, I don't want that. I, I really don't want that. <laughs> but I don't, you know, I don't but, want. I don't even want. I'll tell you what it is. I don't want. So right now with this podcast, I don't want fame per se. Mm-hmm. I don't care to be famous. I just enjoy conversation with different people, and a podcast is a way for me to also gain knowledge. No, that's, that's perfect. I want to learn. I want to learn from every religion, race, culture, creed, mindset. And, and that's the thing that people Everything. are going to get from your podcast. It's a learning. That's it's a I learning. Want. It's a learning podcast yeah. because you're the example. This is your podcast, mm-hmm. and every person you bring on here, you're taking the time to get to know that individual mm-hmm. and what brought them here, how they got to where they got. So when people watch that, they're learning with you. Yep. You know, as you're watching, you're learning. Mm-hmm. But as you upload it, just how you learned, the viewers are learning as well. Mm-hmm. I love that. So, you know, they're learning as well. So they're on that journey with you. Mm-hmm. They're on that journey with you. You know, so, you know, as the content curator or as the person, you know, definitely if you're going to do podcasts or music or anything, that's something you need to think about. You know, the people that you want to reach to. Because those are the people that's going to follow you. That's going to be your fan base. Mm-hmm. That's so true. And you want to, and and, and you, that's a direct reflection of who you are. The stuff 100%. You, put out, the, you, you know, you have to, it's a, it's interesting. It's, it's on one hand, you don't want to be too filtered because then you take away from who you are. But at the same time, I, I, I believe it's important to have a certain level of not filtration. I don't like the word filter. Because that kind of weakens what I'm saying, but it's important to have to have class. To have class. To be classy. Mm-hmm. Classiness is something that we the don't willingness value to be anymore. yourself. Right now, for sure. But I think I think for me, I'm not talking about everybody. Some people are like, mm-hmm. ah, fuck class. Who cares? <laughs> I, th- I think you you have you know people are like yeah, class schmass. I don't care. For me, I think classiness is something that we kind of threw in the garbage nowadays. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important because it simply means that you you put yourself you 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 hold yourself to a stand a certain standard, and that standard is all that standard is all subjective, and everyone has their own standard and their own version of class, and we should all try to understand each other's versions of class, so to speak. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. You know, because I hear what you're saying about the class. Mm. You know, my question is to you: Is do you feel the example of class grows as the generation grows? We'll try to, what do you mean exactly? So what I mean is, for example, you know, what you, what you think is classy. Mm-hmm. I think in a couple years in the next generation, their example of classy is different. Well, what you were saying earlier, by the way, is that the, the younger generation will in many, res- we- many ways follow follow yes they'll have their own version they will have their own version but you know they will put their own spin on it mm-hmm. and by that i mean for example let's say you know for example i'm gonna use this podcast for example so you use this podcast as to learn mm-hmm. you bring different people here to learn their background to educate yourself in a positive way mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's all in a positive way so the next generation that watch you when they do podcasts, when they want to learn something, they're going to bring different people from different backgrounds, no matter what it is, to learn mm-hmm. because that's what they watch you do. But compared to um, someone else who's watching someone else do things in a negative way, you know, and then that's how they learn. You get what I'm saying? Now, so that's that was my question to you. You know, how do you feel like, you know, does classy change over time? Because would you think classy now? We only think that's classy because that's what we grew up on. We grew up on someone showing us saying, hey, this is the classy way to do it. But as you grow up and as life changes, classy changes. In my opinion, I think it changes a little bit. And the people that's watching it that's younger than you after you, then they take the mantle of what classy becomes what classy becomes defined because you know what they choose to do only the generation after them is going to see what they do they might not see what you be able to do well now now you can because of social media and the internet 
you know but that's what i was asking to you you know how do you feel like what you feel of classy will it change over the years do you feel like classy like your version of classy will that always be classy or do you feel as the years go on the generation after you would take your classiness and be able to change it either in a positive way or in a negative way i think we all have i think all of us have a knowledge of what class means mm -hmm. even if it changes i think all of us respect a well-dressed person whether it be a one hundred percent somebody in a nice suit with either you know or, or, or a nice hat, hat nice clean glasses you know just sharp clothing well-spoken professional disciplined uh, kind these are things that you know somebody who keeps a clean home who who is good to their children who respects their woman a woman who respects her man which is rare th right. these are things that you're saying so that's perfect but, but a lot but of people these have are to things that now the days the music's not promoting 100 percent. you understand how things would be different if we 100 if you promote 100 so, so, and that's what i was talking about yeah, over the, the times all movies music uh, all that social media so classes is what you define it as it, not everyone has the same definition of it but i think we all as humans understand a certain level of it of i think class. we can all agree on a certain kind of it mm -hmm. you know it might be slightly different slightly different but there's definitely a core, a core understanding 100%. you know what i'm saying yeah and that was taught like, from the generations before right you know because you catch on to that coreness just like how you said you know we know that you know we know it you know we might not see it but we know a, a classy gentleman is someone just like how you said mm -hmm. dresses well speaks well mm -hmm. is welcoming you know and we know that because from the past generations that's what a classy person did mm -hmm. it might have been a different as the years go on but he was always someone who was willing to accept you who was who he dressed nice mm -hmm. you know he always praised you he always did you know classy things even though the things changed the core stayed the same you know who i like you know who when i think of this you know who you know neo Neo. When I think of Neo, <laughs> I think of Neo he's a classy think, individual. When I think of Neo, he he's somebody to me that just gives off that. And I, everybody, anyone who's listening to this, is like damn straight. And I, hopefully he'll hear this himself. He's always dressed to the nines, man. Nine he's, always to, yeah. got, he's always got his hat. He always wants music. you to know that he's in his best state of mind. And I love that, man. I love the way he dances. He's a classy guy. He's a he's a gentleman, and people love that. One hundred percent. When in his he prime, stays true to himself. In Neo's prime, man. In Neo's prime, and even now, I'm sure, dude. He's he didn't have to put on that that tough bravado. That he did it. He didn't. That wasn't his style. He had that that you know. He was a man. He's not this soft little boy, mm -hmm. you know. But at the same time, he's he was that he's that gentleman, and I think that has so much more value than a lot of the other stuff we're seeing. One hundred percent. If we had more of that, I guarantee you. If we had more of that in our movies, if we had more of that in our music, music. if we had more of that in our general environment. We'd have a much better society. One hundred percent. It's and funny, then, and it, and it's it's not it's not unsexy. That's it's not. sexy as hell. It's sexy we just as have hell. To, we have to make it more mainstream. That's me. That's what I think, man. No, it's facts, bro. Gentlemen, if if you know you know we dropped a lot of gems. One Shout thing I want out to you, Neo. I just I just yeah. <laughs> we dropped a lot of gems. So one thing I want gentlemen to know, you know, a hey, being different is sexy. I don't care what you, mm -hmm. I I you know being different is sexy. You know what made Neo hot when he came out was he was different. Yeah. You know, a lot of the people was song singing about these hoes and saying how they were loyal. You know, Neil came out was like sexy love. Like he was praising the women. You know, you know, he was praising the women. Miss Independent, bro. I used to you, play that. You get what I'm saying? Day. Like I he was to play that song every day. I remember in high school. I dude, I, Yo, I was talk. a massive Neil fan. I'm gonna, Yo, listen to, I'm gonna listen to him later. I guarantee. Yo, real talk, but man. His music and it do the way he and empowers you and it empowers me. You know, and people love that. You know, they might not play it as much on the radio, but guaranteed they got it. They got it on repeat. He should put out a new album. Dude, the music and everybody loved him. The music he put out was phenomenal. He spoke about relationships. relationships. He spoke about he spoke about you know people actually being together as opposed 100%. to one hundred percent jumping around, just jumping around one hundred percent. You yeah. know, he came out when exactly what you said that's what when I, people that's what was talking about cheating on each other. You know, because to be realistic, you know, not everyone out here is cheating on each other. That's just they want you to think that. But that's not true. Not everyone out here is cheating on each other or, you know, being an escort or out here, you know, 
you know, just getting loose. That's not realistic. You know, that's just what they want you to think or that's just, you know, how they want you to feel. And then Neo came out. He was the opposite. You know, he was the opposite. He was telling you how to actually treat a woman, how to love a girl. You know, if she was acting this way, this is probably why she was acting this way. (laughs) You just you just had to listen. The more we talk about it, the more you don't you like, don't you hear what I'm saying? 100 percent. I hear what you're saying. A hundred fucking percent. Because we get it, bro. Yeah, we get it. This is like for me. I've always like spoken about this, but until like literally right now you're sitting with me, bro. And we're having this conversation. It's it's like really speaking to me because like as a guy, right? Mm-hmm. We have in our nature this, you know, we're attracted to all different kinds all of women. Different, yeah. and, you know, we're men. Right? We're meant so, to be dominant. Right? We, so, we're supposed to take over everything. Exactly. So you look at different women and you're attracted to different women. But the whole idea of being classy, right? And this is something that, I, that I've had to work on over the years. Like I'm mm-hmm. being straight up. But I always knew i always knew that my the real happiness lied and we're talking about relationships specifically you know right now mm-hmm. but the real happiness from for i think every individual even 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 for some men or women that say nah I, i'd never really be the relationship type i'd rather just have you know different options and be free of uh, without somebody kind of holding me down because some people don't really like the whole marriage concept mm-hmm. no i get it but i think for me i'm very you know i, I want to be married with children and do all that but I'm not knocking anyone who wants to do it differently, but I think mm-hmm. ultimately we all want relationships. That's what we we seek love. We want one person who can who understands who, us. Yeah, as opposed no matter to what. as opposed to short little short lived experiences. Mm-hmm. And when you have a, a singer like Neo who promotes that, you're you're just you think it's cool. It's you're you're bringing tons of positivity into the world and you're going he is went against all of this other influence that mm-hmm. teaches all the things i think that you know the whole culture of not staying with with a child like i'm, I'm being honest i was born in that mm-hmm. i was born in uh a single household my grandmother just, just, right i because i i was i've said this in other episodes my friends all my friends know this my my mother couldn't take care of a child and she had me out of what they were she wasn't married when she had me Mm -hmm. and my grandmother went to court and gained full custody of me i've been living with her ever since Mm -hmm. and if she hadn't done that i don't know where i'd be today so this is something that i'm very against the whole idea is you know if you're having a child you better be with that kid so can i actually want another question this is and i just want to be clear this isn't specifically i'm not specifically talking about black america here Mm -hmm. because i i people that hear these things they automatically take what you say and they try yeah, to and, and to try to generalize it yeah because i'm uh, clearly i'm not a black person and i've i've i'm a product of this mm-hmm. and this has nothing to do with black america this is my, it's just saying? life so be real with you so everyone has their own predicament and, and situation and no matter how you spin it going back to to neo and singing mm-hmm. we need more positive uh, positive influence so let me let me ask you a question. So um, off of just what you said, yeah. do you feel, you know, and it's just based off the information you know now, mm-hmm. only off the information you know now, up until this point, mm-hmm. up until this point, do you feel, you know, or I wouldn't even say feel, do you feel, you know, this happened because of the culture and the music that was out now? So everyone thinks now that it's okay, you know, to be pregnant, it's you been know, normalized. you know, it's been normalized compared to then where we had more people like Neo singing about the positivities about relationship, 100%. you know, 100%. you know, singing about, you know, get to know to other before, you know, you try to have sex with them or you try to do anything with them. You know, do you feel that, you know. Because of your childhood, you you know how you were raised. Was it because of the influence, how they normalized it, or because you know that just was just life? I think. I mean, everything we do is to a large degree related to what we're surrounded with. Okay. We're all influenced, and in, in True. some shape or form, one hundred percent. And it's our duty as individuals to be able to look at something and determine whether we should be doing or not be doing that thing and that takes a large level of maturity it's not 100%. it's not easy because if you're constantly surrounded by a certain kind of behavior it's hard to know whether you that thing is good or not mm-hmm. 
it's very difficult to look at other you know ways of life and say well maybe that's a better way it's mm -hmm. very hard to do because what are what influences us is what makes us so as you get older as an adult that's that's the responsibility you have there's nothing else no, no one else is responsible for that and i think the sooner we wake up to that as human beings black white yellow no green, matter the orange, color it doesn't matter we all as as our own person has to be able to determine whether something we're doing is going to help us or make things worse and so and, and the world is in an equal place as far as there are people born richer poorer smarter dumber fatter skinnier we're not given equal opportunity mm -hmm. you know okay? not, yeah but at the end of the day there is enough opportunity out there out there you yep. might be way way back in the race there might be you know millions of people that are have a massive head start okay and that's not fair it's not quote unquote but is what but you do with that opportunity that is what it is you can't change that mm -hmm. i wasn't born to a millionaire family to be honest i'm glad i wasn't because part of the big that's the thing that that really gets me because a lot of people are like oh well you know you had it better you grew up in a you know to a rich to rich parents and blah 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 you know how many rich kids are miserable Mis because because they got no guidance they have but also they had everything handed they don't mm -hmm. part of the biggest beauties of life is that struggle is is having is learning achieve achieve yeah the things that you didn't have when you were younger and then when you get those things you feel unstoppable mm -hmm. when you were given all of that from a young age and you were you, you someone held your hand and spoon fed you you're never going to feel that sense of confidence and, and strength that somebody who didn't have it and that's the, the what i say the paradox the the switcheroo of all of it is mm -hmm. To a large degree, being born, in my opinion, being born poor is so much better in a way as long as you end up getting to where you want to be. Born to be. If you, if you, you got to have that drive, though. Yeah, because it, and, and most people don't, and that's the reality. Most yep, people most can't. Most people don't have that drive. And that's it. But you have everyone's got their own issues, bro. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got their own issues. The reality is, man, when you grow up in a harder environment, you become a stronger person. And if 100%. you can use that to become successful, you will be unstoppable unstoppable that's what i think because you're so used to all the hard are the hardship yeah you bro you, you you don't you, you'll take your feet off and walk on the mud <laughs> a, somebody born in a rich home oh my feet i can i need to be yeah you know i need to be like, comfortable exactly they can't nah. survive in a dangerous environment they you you put them in, in any kind of predicament they're not used to they're not they'll they'll shit their pants but you put somebody that grew up in a hard environment, they grew up... They can adapt. Th exactly. Because that's, that's all they know. But only, only if they... If, if not all they know is where they're from, meaning they take where they're from and they mm -hmm. use it as a, and they as use a tool, it a but they also can say, okay, well, I was here. I'm still who I am. I'm always going to be me in my essence, but I'm going to go and, and, and elevate myself. Elevate myself. Take that I'm going to go here, learn, exactly, elevate myself bro. here. You know, 100%. Is that awesome? It is, bro. And the reason I ask you that is because I, I relate it to now. You know, I think about, you know, all the music, that has come out you know up until now was popular and now we're in an age where you know marriage is not popular where people recommend you you know to it's okay like now compared to when i was younger you know girls are now willing to have you know threesomes they're willing to have another girl or another dude in a relationship compared to when i was younger because that's the norm mm. that's the thing they they teach you Compared to when I think about it, let's say if there's more people like Neo preaching the positivity of relationships, preaching to people, letting them know, hey, you know, I understand that she's nice and she looks thick in that bikini, but get to know her. Mm -hmm. You don't know who she is. Get to know her. Make sure she's someone that you want to have a baby with, like how the difference of time would be. That's so hard, though. I'm going to tell you right now. I've you know, it, it would be hard. You know, it, I've been influenced we've been influenced. We all know? we all have been influenced. You know, I, I need that positive influence. <laughs> I'm not trying to say like, oh, I'm all set and I'm all good. I that affects me negatively. No, man. no, 100 percent. But that's what I'm saying. Just think of yeah. just think about just just like because because. My thinking is the same way how the you know, how it affected us this way. I think of if they did it the opposite way, how would it affect us? Oh, we'd be so much better off. We would be so much better off. But you know, but since we since we chose to normalize that, that's just the age you know we're living in. You know, that's the age we're living in. And just like how I told you, just like how I told you, the reason I came up with my label because I noticed, yo, this is the age we're living in. 
You know, this is this is the norm. The, you know, realistic or not, this is the norm. This is what everyone is used to. And instead of complaining about it, instead of saying this is trash or complaining about it, you're like, yo, we're going to be the difference. And I understand that, yo, right now I might not be that difference. People might not understand or realize what I'm saying. But the next generation will hear me and they will see what I'm talking about and be like, yo, you know, what he was talking about is right. <laughs> so so yeah. how do you think, how do you think you can change this personally? M me personally? You know, I feel how I can change it is just bringing that energy to the world. I feel there's not enough people bringing that energy here so we can see it. There's not enough people, you know, people understand it, but they're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. So I feel that's where I come in. I feel that's where I'm supposed to be. I have I have the innate ability to the things that people are not seeing. I have an ability to bring it in a way where old and new can see it together on an equal playing field. I love that. You know, either is e even if it's by music or art or whatever it is, I bring it. So let me just give you an example. Like for example, you know, I talk about you know a lot of my you know me. I, I'm a '90s baby. I grew up in the '90s. I feel the '90s was the last area, last you know decade of kids actually being outside. Because the 2000s after that is all computer. It's all social media. So I felt the 90s was the last, you know, decade of people being outside. And, you know, I noticed, you know, you know, just, you just, damn, I, I'm not going to lie, I lost my train of thought. Well, you were basically saying how nowadays social media is, is yeah, everything now. It's everything. We, I remember, just remember. So social media is everything now. So, you know, no matter what you see, you believe that's what's hot, you know, but be you believe that's the trending topic, you know, when really it's just how you feel about the situation. Just because everyone puts likes and say this is hot doesn't mean that it's hot for you. You got to know what's true to you. Once you know what's true to you, you can evolve in any situation. But that's that's the thing about human nature, man. It's so easy to influence people because most people are, are sheep. They don't have the ability really? to think for themselves. They just want they they want to succumb to what's regular something right. So what what's normal, what's quote unquote normal. So that's why you have people who let me just get like gather my thought on this. You have people who almost don't like themselves and would trade their life for, for I see someone what you're else saying. exactly and, you see and, what you're saying and you and you see it where you know a famous actor or a famous singer or whatever it is these people are losing their minds mm -hmm. over them Facts. they're just people they're like, just people if i see a big a, ma a huge actor that i'm into or a singer or whatever it is i'll be excited to meet them don't get me wrong but I'm not going to lose my mind. 100%. You know, if I, I see them in, in the city somewhere and I, I was, you know, I was right next to them and I could have said hi to them and they got away before. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, I miss them. Duh. They're just people. They have more money than me. They're, they're famous, <sighs> blah, blah, blah. I just remember Who too. Who cares though? The only reason you'd care is if you're not happy enough with your own life mm -hmm. and you need to feel that this person is somehow giving you a better life mm -hmm. and they can help influence you in a good way but they don't really care about you they don't know you they don't do you think any i mean any celebrity you know or anyone famous or anyone with with any kind of influence they have never met you before they know nothing about you if you drop dead tomorrow it's not that they wouldn't care if they knew you or that you were fa okay they would but they don't know you they don't, they don't know, know you. you to care Mm -hmm. So you're putting so much stock and interest into this person who's never even met you and couldn't care less about you, and you're acting like they're God. You know, mm -hmm. you give them respect, no problem. I'm not saying to just dislike them, but in love yourself love enough, yourself enough, not to give every ounce every, of your energy. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I get it. Yeah. I, yo, it's funny. Is I wanted to ask you, um, because I just thought about this now. You know, you know, I guess because I'm, I'm thinking about how I really want to say this, you know, without coming the wrong way. But I guess I'm going to just say it, you know, how do you feel about, you know, the evolution of time, like how we communicate with each other? 
And I guess the best way I can explain it is, for example, in the old days, you know, we used to approach women. You know, we used to approach them, talk to them, you know, get to know them. And now, you know, because of social media, because of the Internet now, you know, we we message them. We get in the DMs. <laughs> it's, it's very skewed. By you know, way. you know, it's, it's different. You know, as time goes on, you know, I feel, you know, we're getting, you, you know, the end goal is to be with women. But we're doing things that's going to separate us from women. And the reason why I bring that up is because, like I say, you know, how my label is to be the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, me personally, I love to approach women. That's one of the things I do. I love to, no matter what it is, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if you're with your mom, your sister, your cousin. If you sexy <laughs> and I'm feeling you, I'm going to approach you. <laughs> you know, I don't care if I win or lose, if I get your number or not. You know, I'm going to approach you, you know, and a lot of ladies tell me, you know, the approach is deeper. It's a better connection compared to the person Much that's better. hitting their DMs, because when you think about it, you know, and this is just for any gentleman, anybody that's watching this. If you like a girl, you know, just just think about this. There's probably a lot of people hitting up her DMs, you know, just to be real. There's a lot of people hitting up her DMs, how you can be different. How you can be different from those guys that's hitting up her DMs, you approach her. Mm -hmm. You approach her because I promise you, there's not many people approaching her. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of ladies tell me this. You know, it's not enough people uh, um, approaching, being authentic, you know. And it's funny, even though times are evolving, the women, you know, times or people just are, the best way I can say it, they, they relate to you know the old ways <laughs> it's funny like they they relate to the old ways even though you know everyone is hitting up girls in their dms they will prefer you to approach because them the old school way is the better way bro. The because because the the new age is goes against our nature and we're not saying they're wrong it's just the difference between the times mm -hmm. you know it's just because you know as i and, and it's just my opinion this is only just my opinion as the time goes on you know you know there's two different there's two different types of men in this world there's men that are go-getters who are going to go after what they want what they believe if they even if they believe it's true or not and then there is people who want to hesitate they're not 100 percent sure they want to you know they want to sit back they don't have the confidence to go all in Mm -hmm. And I notice over the times, you know, and this is once again, this is just my person. I notice over the times that more men are becoming more, I won't say introverts, but they want the easy way out. No one wants to do the hard thing. The hard thing is approaching to the women, you talking to her and she's like, no, you don't have no personality. There's nothing about you that I like, so I'm going to shut you down. That's, I just want to add to this because it's phenomenal. I, I agree with bro. I could not, it's, it's beautiful. The thing that's so awesome about it is the with, with all these with this DM situation, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow you to be rejected and learn and learn what you said you, wrong. One hundred percent. So when you approach them and you talk to them, and, and if they don't like you, and even if you're embarrassed, right? Let's say you go to go over to to this woman you find to be very attractive, and she just pretty much ignores you. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a learning. It's a learning. You, you went and you did you it. You went. You can't 100%. say you didn't do it. Going forward, that makes you, you feel so much. Hundred percent. Going forward, because most men won't. Go, most, going forward, you evaluate it and you say, okay, maybe I did nothing wrong, and you know I was a gentleman. She didn't like me. Okay, or maybe I said something stupid. There's no need to overthink it too much. Mm -hmm. But that is how you get better. One hundred percent. That's how you improve. Right. But if you're gonna sit there and only talk to them, and, and this is, and we're all affected by this. I now. Um, because of COVID, it's so much more difficult to go and meet people. One hundred percent, you don't really have that available. The same, and then everyone has a mask, so you're not hundred percent sure. If, like if she, you know she's cute, <laughs> and by the time <laughs> it is, I think we. I saw these masks, bro. They should start putting the, this part of my face over the mask. <laughs> Like putting, you know what I mean? Like a drawing of drawing, yeah. of my beard and my like my mouth, so you can actually see what I look like. Yeah. That would be hilarious. I saw that they've they've been doing this. It's great. Yes, bro, it is. Th that's hilarious. <laughs> I I haven't seen that. Yeah, you can find it somewhere. I I saw somebody. I forgot who it was that had it. I'm gonna find it. But dude, I I agree with everything you're saying. And I know I'm gonna have episodes with people that I'm gonna disagree with. I've had some where like I disagreed here and there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have controversial people. No, of course, on. that's only natural. But but this was a 
an incredible episode. 100%. I'm so happy that you came into this with me. It's just, uh, there's so much, like, the reality is to get, like, really blunt about it. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to talk to somebody from a different background. And I had, I had a, a Brazilian, a Brazilian woman on, on a, a prior episode and mm -hmm. I've had some guy friends on the episodes. It's so key to be able to talk to people from different walks of life and understand their, their opinion and their, yeah. their way 100. of thinking. Cause that's how we grow as a, as a, well, as a unit, as enough, everyone, bro. we don't do this enough. Mm -hmm. We have, especially nowadays we're so we, we we're, we've been so separated, you know, Oh, I'm black. You're white. I'm Asian. You're Spanish, and I'm this and I'm that. And the more we can have these platforms to dis to discuss these things, it'll be so much better. You no, know, it's funny. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to say this because I just thought about this now, and I'm gonna start saying this from now into forever. You know, when the United States was formed, you know, when United States came together, all 50 states, it was a bunch of white men that came and said, you know, this is manifest destiny. This is our destiny. We were supposed to unite. Mm -hmm all these lands and then as time grows as we were just talking you know as time goes evolution changed the next generation see things as a different way mm -hmm. so the next generation after you know how the u.s was formed it became multifaceted it became not just whites here now it became whites blacks spanish no matter what color you are mm -hmm. you know you could be any color i don't care if you're purple or green you know you know, what the U.S. has become now is all walks of life have an opportunity to follow their dreams, mm -hmm. you know. So now, you know, our future, and this is just my opinion, I feel our future going forward, you know, should be, you know, all the natures of everyone here in the U.S. coming together as one and building something that's equal for everyone, you know, not just anyone everyone everyone should have the same opportunity because like i said you know the evolution of the things you know how the generation has gone is different it's totally it's totally different mm -hmm. and if we're gonna get this because and the only reason i say that because everyone and this is just my personal opinion i feel everyone here in the united states want that persona or believes that the united states is the land of the free mm -hmm. no it's not the land of the free. It's the land of the opportunity. If you have the money, if you have the means, if you know the people, you have the opportunity to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't. It shouldn't be the land of the opportunity. It should be the land of the. It should be land of equality. No matter if you came from Egypt, Australia, Antarctica, Japan, Asia, doesn't matter what country you come from, because they all have their ways of how they govern. When you come to the U.S., I don't care if you have a penny or a million dollars. Mm -hmm. If you can influence my life, if you can bring positivity to me, if you could bring to me something that's going to help me grow and unite us all together, we should be with that. Because we're the only country that does that. Mm -hmm. And we should continue to do that because that's what we become. That's what we become. But right now, I feel we're in a phase where we're fighting of what we want to become and what we used to be. Mm -hmm. Well, it's deep. I like that. <laughs> no, it's dope, dude. I, I yeah, that's great. I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's interesting because I think humans are, are, um, before we reformed, and I think in many respects we're doing better than we used to be as far as like understanding other cultures, but. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of work to do. We humans do. Are, humans are always going to kind of want to be part of a group. So, you know. Uh, That's just our natural right, so our, our, our natural nature. instinct. That's our nature. Right. Think about Adam and Eve. When the Lord made Adam. And, and this is just if you believe in Christianity because there's a lot of religions out there. But if you believe in Christianity, you know, there was Adam. You know, he was the first human. And the Lord knew that Adam was going to be bored by himself. <laughs> he knew he was going to be bored by himself he gave this man so many tasks he was like yo you can name every animal fruit everything in this garden but he knew if he was by himself that was going to be boring so he made a woman he made a, a companion out of his rib you know and that companion is what helped him get through any anything. Even when he was when he went back and forth with the Lord, when he told him, "Yo, you're supposed to stay away from that garden. Don't eat anything from that tree. Mm -hmm. If you do, you will die." 
Adam knew he was going to die. But since he had a companion with him, he was like, fuck it. You know, I got Eve with me. Shit, we going to die together. We going to get through it yeah. together. Yeah, you know, that's just our natural instinct. We want to do things together. We don't give a fuck what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we just want to do it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Phenomenal. Yo. <laughs> this is great I'm yo like, yeah, El- yo elise thank you so much for coming yo man. i appreciate you uh, for having me bro my pleasure i i th- i'm very excited to put this one out uh i just think we need first of all we need more neos man 100 <laughs> percent, bro you know? and i'm trying to lead that wave bro yeah. i'm trying to you know i'm trying to be you know because n- n- me I-, I do hip-hop and r&b mm-hmm. you know and i produce i i produce beats and everything but my favorite genre is jazz you know, my favorite genre is R&B smooth stuff because I love that lovey-dovey stuff because that's the core, you know, to our hearts is love. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, f- I felt if hatred was our core, this world would be in war- constant war. Mm-hmm. Is in con- It would be in constant war. But the fact, you know, that we're not in war with other nations, we're not in war with each other, down to our core, you know, our instinct is love. Mm-hmm. But we also think about ourselves. You know, I'm down to love you, but how are you going to benefit me? Mm-hmm. You know, how are we going to benefit me? And we need more people spreading that positive love, that positive energy instead of the unrealistic of what's not going to happen. I agree, bro. Well, with that being said, it's awesome. That being said, it's been a wonderful, wonderful episode, man. 100%, bro. Again. I appreciate you for having me, my brother. Guys. Tune in to another episode of Sing Semantics.